Hi doctor, I'm looking at David's case and um, just wanted to talk through some of the changes that I'm going to make, things that you're probably used to seeing. Um, so looking from uh, the posterior forward, um, I see you know close to class one molars. I see that the uh, first molars are doing some expansion. Um, it looks like it's more pure translation to the buckle than anything. Um, and I'd rather do um, molar uprighting. So I'll show that with the three controls in a moment. Then looking forward, um, this gives me concern and then I see these premolars rotating. But looking at his um, initial photos, I really don't think they need to and that's what's probably triggering this lower premolar to need to be intruded as well. Um, and then the canines, um, this type of mesiodistal root torque movement is not what we want to see. The goal of the case is to improve the smile. Um, we can already see a little bit of a black triangle uh, that he is starting with here. So then tipping that the crown of this canine mesial and trying to push the root distal, um, really difficult movement, um, but also counterproductive to the case. So we can just write to the technicians and ask to eliminate mesiodistal root torque, or I can change that with the 3D controls. So if we see that this starts off with a black triangle, but then it doesn't finish with a black triangle, then I'm looking at the laterals and seeing what's happening here. And this lateral, the crown is being tipped buckle, so that is all fine to do, um, but there's mesiodistal root torque planned in on this tooth as well. Um, so you can do this, uh, change this up with the 3D controls. And this is the type of movement that is the least predictable to do and typically not one that is uh, very helpful um, for a, a adult, um, you know, just improving aesthetics and uh, reducing and correcting the deep bite type case. So then I'm going to look over here and then you can just toggle down or I like to highlight, type in the number zero, enter and just eliminate that way. Um, so now we don't want, we don't need this type of root control attachment and might look at what other attachment would we need. Well, I just eliminated the extrusion because we didn't need to pull the canine further down on a deep bite case and the tooth isn't rotating very much. So then we can go without that attachment. I'm going to do the same type of thing with the lateral and eliminate that movement and then again eliminate extrusion on a deep bite case. So once again we can then remove an attachment, make this a lot simpler. Um, the molar movement, um, I would caution with upper molar movements which are not being planned here. This second molar is being kind of tipped or moved to the distal and that isn't clinically very likely to happen in an adult. So I right click and make unmovable with the second molars. Um, I want to go ahead and make these first upper molars unmovable. And if you want to upright the lower molar, what I would prefer to do instead of doing, so I'm reducing this buckle movement, this translation movement, when we see a lower molar that is lingually inclined or more narrow, I like to just do the crown tipping instead. This will typically put the molar into a heavy occlusion on the clincheck, and this is one that I leave alone because when it's just a little bit here, clinically that ends up being just fine. So I'm undoing what was initially planned in and then doing more uprighting here just until we get into a little heavier contact. That looks about perfect. I'm gonna be addressing the premolar rotations and checking things throughout the rest of the case, but those are some of my initial edits and how I do them.